One of the more polarizing aspects about the Doom franchise is its boss fights. Arguably the weakest levels from classic Doom are the ones where you fight a boss. E3-M8 with the Spider Mastermind is the most underwhelming map in Doom 1, and the Icon of Sin boss in Doom 2 felt like an afterthought more than an epic confrontation. TNT Evolution and Plutonia improved on the Icon of Sin maps, but still the idea of shooting rockets into this wall is not that enjoyable. Doom 2016 featured a few bosses, and they were fine, I guess? The Cyber Demon fight was actually really cool, but the rest of them were pretty forgettable. Doom 2016 didn't have awful bosses or anything, but I will also admit that they weren't the most fun parts of the game. When Doom Eternal released, players had five bosses to defeat throughout the campaign. The Doom Hunter, the Marauder, the Gladiator, the Khan Maker, and of course the Icon of Sin are all the bosses that I count in Doom Eternal. The I mini boss in Necrovol is one fight that I'm not including on the list, if you can even call it a boss encounter. The same goes with the bosses that show up in The Ancient Gods Part 1, since I'll do a separate video about my thoughts on those later. As I revisit the boss fights in Doom Eternal, the more I appreciate them for what they are. Similar to Doom 2016, the regular arena combat is 10 times more enjoyable than the bosses, but they don't ruin the overall experience or anything. Starting off with the Doom Hunter and Marauder. These are the only two bosses that transform into regular enemies as the game progresses. This makes the Marauder and Doom Hunter unique from the pack, and I love how both of these boss fights are set up. The Doom Hunter is teased a lot when playing the Doom Hunter base level. I mean, the dude is literally in the level name, so it's no wonder why he's being built up. The player looks at designs and prototypes of the Doom Hunter throughout the level, and then before you know it, you're fighting him inside an enclosed arena. The boss fight itself is not that hard, but I think the most exciting aspect is when you drop down and you have to kill two at once. If you had trouble with the first Doom Hunter, then prepare to get your game face on, as you're pitted up against two Doom Hunters simultaneously. I also appreciate how the arena opens up and it's set outside in the snow. The entire Doom Hunter encounter is a great set piece, and while the level by itself is nothing too special, the boss fight makes up for it. The Marauder boss fight in Art Complex is effective, but in a different way. Instead of the level building up the Marauder's eventual appearance like what they did with the Doom Hunter, he just shows up through a teleporter out of nowhere. The Slayer and the Marauder stare each other down, almost like something out of Good, Bad and the Ugly. If a Marauder ever has another badass cutscene with the Slayer in the next DLC, I hope to see some extreme close-ups on the eyes, spaghetti western style. Speaking of the Marauder's eyes, as he states, my eyes have been opened, they are shown to be glowing even more, which is such a great touch. Anyway, I love how the Marauder pops up to almost surprise the player, and how he doesn't have a lot of build-up because he doesn't need it. He looks like the Slayer, he actually talks unlike the other demons, and he has a shotgun equipped. The Marauder, just by his appearance and the way he conducts himself, is almost like a demonic version of the Slayer, and the audience instantly knows this, and there doesn't need to be this whole song and dance building him up. The tension already exists, and the boss fight itself will kick your ass if you don't know what you're doing. That being said, you'll eventually know what you're doing by the end of the game, and you'll be killing Marauders fairly easily. When you get up to Sentinel Prime, you come across the Gladiator, and he is a cool boss fight, but the level itself is lackluster. I get that Sentinel Prime is where you get the huge lore dump, and on your first playthrough, it doesn't really matter that there's nothing to this level because it's more about story than action, but that doesn't hold up on later playthroughs. I don't really like playing Sentinel Prime and walking up to the gladiator because there's nothing to do, and I get that's the point, but still, the gladiator boss itself is pretty awesome, and I think that his death animation where the player slams his fucking head with a battle axe and wipes his guts across the ground is incredible. I also like how he deflects the player's gunfire right back at them using his Wonder Woman shield power, and I wish other demons had a similar ability. That being said, I don't think that Sentinel Prime is a stain on Doom Eternal or anything, I just wish that for the next game, we don't have these fillerish levels. Thankfully, this is the only lore-heavy dump in the game, and the boss we get out of it is good, so it's okay. 
The Khan Maker is the main villain of Doom Eternal, and she might be the weakest boss in the game. I just don't find fighting her as entertaining as destroying the Icon of Sin or facing off against the Marauder and Doom Hunter. The way that she makes the ground into a hazard is more of an annoyance than anything else, and the Maker drones can easily overwhelm you if you aren't systematically taking them out. I actually think that the Maker drones are a pretty solid way of raising the challenge and making sure that you are navigating the arena carefully, but the hazardous flaws are a little frustrating to deal with. I would imagine that the Bloodmakers will be included instead of the regular Maker Drones when id Software creates the Erdak Master level, which will be interesting to see. While the Khan Maker isn't an awful boss fight or anything, I don't believe any of the Doom reboot bosses have been outright bad, but she is probably the weakest fight of the lot. Before we move on to the Icon of Sin, I will say one positive aspect about the Khan Maker. The way that you have to grapple onto her and then punch is a smart method of getting players to to use the meat hook more. I want the meat hook to be incorporated more into the core level design, and the Khan Maker did it successfully in the base game. The Icon of Sin is the final boss of Doom Eternal, and he is leaps and bounds better than his Doom 2 counterpart. I really don't get how people can get a kick out of the original Icon of Sin map, but I won't harp on that too much today. I made a 40 minute video talking all about Doom 2 for fuck's sake, so I recommend checking that out. Regardless, the Icon of Sin fight has two phases, and both of them are basically the same. Sure, there are minor differences between each phase, but the main goal is identical. Shoot at the Icon of Sin and take off his armor and flesh. The Doom 2 boss fight is more about taking out the other demons and making sure that they don't overwhelm you, and the same general idea is present in Doom Eternal's Icon of Sin boss. However, it feels like you are actually working towards something by destroying all 8 pieces of the Icon of Sin in Doom Eternal, and not just aimlessly shooting rockets into his brain like in Doom 2. Final Sin is the ultimate challenge in Doom Eternal, and it takes all of your acquired skills and knowledge, and then puts them to the test. This last level level is one of the highlights of their campaign for me, and defeating the Icon of Sin is satisfying as well. This has been me revisiting each of the boss fights in Doom Eternal. If I had to rank them, I would say that the Marauder is the best boss encounter, followed by the Icon of Sin, Doom Hunter and Gladiator, and then the weakest one is the Khan Maker in my opinion. However, that's not to say that any of Doom Eternal's boss fights are bad or anything, and I would love to hear your thoughts about these bosses in the comments. Enjoyable and engaging boss fights aren't easy to design, and I can't imagine trying to make them for a game as fast-paced as Doom Eternal. Thanks for watching.